I'm Laura Kemmler. I'm product manager for Rosemont Magnetic Flow Meters here in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Welcome. I am in our flow lab um, and I'm going to go through the Slurry Mag demo with you today. Um, what I have here is um, my computer back here has a noise file on it, which I'll go over what exactly that is. Um, I have the 8782 Slurry Mag transmitter. I have the 8785 Slurry Mag calibration standard. This is an internal version, so it has a few extra knobs on it, but don't worry about that. Um, the customer version uh, has stop spot here, has all of the functionality you would need. Um, I have the 8712EM process meter uh, transmitter, and I have the 8714 calibration standard that goes with the process meter. Um, and I'm going to go over some of the functionality that the Slurry Mag has and directly compare it with our process meter. Um, when we were developing the Slurry Mag, we really wanted it to perform exceptionally well in these really high noise applications. We had a lot of experience in these applications from our 8712H product, but we really wanted uh, no parallel with the performance. So we went out uh, into pulp and paper, metals and mining, uh, oil field service applications where you see a lot of sand, you see pulp stock that with really long pulp fibers and like bias uh, measurements. Um, you have ore, just <laughs> chunks of ore that cause uh, incredible amounts of noise in your process flow and it's hard to measure and you just have all this, uh, your signal to noise ratio is out of control. You have tons of noise, you have spike noise, um, you can tell where your flow measurement kind of is, but not exactly what it is. Or you have just so much damping that uh, you don't have a responsive flow measurement. And those are problems we really wanted to solve. So we took those noise files, we used them in our research and development. We have the slurry mag transmitter. And I'm going to show you what it can do on a 12% eucalyptus pulp stock uh, noise file. So I have that running on my computer right now. You can see it. Um, it's very noisy at the moment. So we got to choose a really noisy noise file uh, to, for the demo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 8782 into high frequency mode. So this is new functionality, uh, taking something that our process meters can do with uh, 5 hertz and 37 hertz. But now we have a low frequency and a high frequency. So I'm going to go to low or high frequency. It's in low frequency. So I'm going to go to detailed setup, more parameters, coil frequency, and change it to high frequency. So right away, our high process noise diagnostic alert goes away. Uh, it's much happier with our <laughs> signal to noise, noise ratio. We still have that same alert going on on our 8712EM. Uh, we're going to pretend like we don't have the 37 hertz capability on this transmitter, so it mimics uh, what you would uh, a common process meter. Um, and what we're going to do here is add damping because that's what a lot of people have to do is just increase the damping that they have on their uh, flow measurement. Um, and damping is a really powerful tool. Um, so it is effective at minimizing uh, your going to basic setup. Go to damping and we're going to add 10 seconds of damping to this. So damping is a powerful tool. It does let you eliminate your, your spikes, so your peaks and your valleys and your process signals going all over the place. And you have 10 seconds of damping and it adds 10 seconds. Uh, it looks at the past 10 seconds and it um, uses that information to determine, okay, if I have data up here and data down here, well, it's probably somewhere in the middle. Based on my past flow rates, it should be right around here which is very helpful if your flow rate never changes. If you have something happening upstream or um, like a leak or a valve that's kind of squeaky or it became unstuck and you have, for whatever reason, your process has changed slightly, a damping's not gonna pick that up right away. Uh, it will eventually <laughs> after the 10 seconds or whatever you have uh, on your damping, but that responsiveness it might be too late for you, um, depending what you have, if you have chemicals that you're adding or um, you are trying to just have a repeatable 
process uh, where batch after batch after batch is the same and you have quality issues now or uh, you have an expense issue because you added way too much chemical and you're just trying to keep your budgets in line. Um, now you have rework you have to do or uh, an environmental issue because you release too much um, downstream and that's an issue. So just having a responsive flow measurement if you're trying to control after it is incredibly important. And damping makes that very difficult. So what we have on the computer is a very flat 8782 measurement, which is the blue line, and the red line is our process meter. And we have eliminated a lot of the spikes. Uh, we've reduced the range of what our flow measurement was in, and for some applications, that would be perfectly acceptable. Um, but if we're trying to control, then it's not ideal. Um, other functionality that the 8782 has, besides the low high frequency, is being able to change the signal processing modes. So being able to adjust your signal processing is functionality that our process meter has. Um, you just have to know exactly what setting you want to change and what you want to change it to and understand what, how that change will affect the overall signal processing. So it's not something you can just go in and change with a little bit of knowledge, you really have to know what you're doing, um, which made it so not everyone can adjust their signal processing. And it's a really powerful thing to be able to adjust. So we have signal processing modes. Uh, we have a bunch of modes. You have off, you can turn the signal processing off. Uh, minimum default, which is what it ships from the factory as, increased, maximum, and custom. So if you do wanna go in and change your settings, this specific setting to this, you can still do that, but for everyone else, their signal processing modes, it shifts as the default. Um, I'm gonna change it to increased. So we're gonna go to transmitter menu, go down to detailed setup, down to signal processing, and we have signal processing mode. And I am going to change it from default to, uh, let's go to increased. And um, since this changes the signal processing settings, um, overall, in general, it, as you increase the signal processing, um, your uh, flow rate should look better. Um, but it's something you want to test out and see how your flow rate responds to it. Um, and if you want a more responsive flow rate and your um, process can handle it, you can decrease it to minimal. Um, but signal processing should become your new go-to setting. So instead of, um, I have process noise, I need to increase my damping, I'm gonna increase my signal processing mode and see if that eliminates my spike noise because I know signal processing, uh, it'll, I'll trade a little bit of my responsiveness, but I'm gonna know exactly what my flow rate is gonna be. Um, so as you increase your signal processing, it does take a little bit more time to figure out what your flow rate's gonna be. So uh, if, if responsiveness is absolutely critical, then default or minimal is gonna be your setting. But if you need to eliminate that spike noise, signal processing is gonna be the better trade-off because instead of just doing a, a flat algorithm of the last 10 seconds, it's going to look at um, what's actually happening, what is signal, what is noise, and be able to tell you what your noise or what your flow measurement is and get rid of that noise. So I hope you've enjoyed the demo, looking at the functionality of the Slurry Mag transmitter um, and going through our real noise file from our 12, or it's 10 to 12 percent pulp stack, euca eucalyptus pulp stack, um, and seeing the performance between the two. So our 8712EM does have two coil frequencies and we only looked at five hertz. So it does have 37 hertz uh, that you would be able to change it to and it does have some slurry capabilities, um, but for these extra aggressive applications, that is what we designed the slurry mag for. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration. <laughs>